Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Well, if you're here, I guess we might as well do a video today, right? Why not? I thought today we would do another lead code problem, of course, of course. Um, and this time it's going to be a linked list problem. Not only is it going to be a linked list problem, but it's going to be a medium level linked list problem. So if you want to follow along, go ahead and go to the lead code question called palindrome linked list. It is also question number 234. But before we get started, you know that we have to start every single video with a wildlife wild fact. I think I scared the dog with that one. Sorry, Toby. Did you know that some species of manta rays can grow to be 29 feet long? These giant acrobats of the ocean are actually still hunted by humans. And they're hunted for their meat, which is used for food, of course, but they're also hunted for their gill plates, which is used in some Chinese medicines in various parts of Asia. Now, if you want to learn more about manta rays, please check out the links in the description below. Anyway, on to the problem for today. So, if you go to question 234 on leak code called palindrome linked list, let's read the description. Given a singly linked list, determine if it is a palindrome. Well, that seems simple enough, but before we get into it, a palindrome is anything that can be written both backwards and forwards and still be the same word. For instance, the word race car is a palindrome because if you read race car backwards, it still says race car. If we read the number 1,221 backwards, it still reads 1,221. If we look at the examples that they give us, we see that the first input is a linked list where the first node, the head, is one and the tail is two. This is a linked list of length two and the head is different from the tail, so we know that this would return false. This is not a palindrome. However, if we look at example number two, the input is a linked list with values one, two, two, one, just like our number from before. And if we read that backwards, if we go from tail to head, it also reads one, two, two, one. The only problem is that this is a singly linked list. So we can't go from tail to head. We can only move from head to tail. So how are we gonna solve this? How are we gonna know if this list can be read the same backwards as it is forwards? I'm gonna show you. So if we think about the problem, first thing that we wanna think about are our edge cases. Like what if there was no linked list really? Or what if the head was null? I'm gonna write that, what if head equals null or head dot next equals null. If either of these return true, we want to also return true because this would mean that our linked list right off the bat we know is a palindrome. What if these are not the case? Well, we move forward. And when we move forward, I'm going to create three different variables. And they're all going to start off equal to the head of our linked list. So I'm gonna say let slow equal head, let fast equal head, and let cur or current equal head. Now, why do we do this? Well, cur and cur is going to come into play a little bit later, so I won't explain that just yet. But slow and fast, what does that mean? Well, what we can do is loop through this linked list of first time. Trust me, this is only the first time. And I want to say, while fast is not equal to null, and so both of these now have to be true for this loop to keep going and fast dot next does not equal null. what i'm going to do is i'm going to say within this loop slow equals slow dot next so this is going to move that slow variable through the list one by one okay but now here's where the fast variable comes into play I'm going to say that fast is equal to fast.next.next. .next. 
So if you look at this, both of these are happening at the exact same time. The only difference is that the fast variable is moving through our linked list twice as fast as the slow variable, hence the name fast. By the time fast reaches the end of our linked list, our slow variable will be at the midpoint of our linked list. Once we do that, I want to create a stack. Stack is going to be an array. And what we're going to do is we are going to loop through the rest of this linked list from our midpoint and push each value into the stack so that later we can pop each value off of the stack as well. If you don't know what a stack is, a stack is implemented with an array and it is first in, last out. The values that I push into the stack first are going to be in the front of the array, but then I'm going to take values from the back of the array. So first in, last out, or you can look at it as last in, first out. The last value that I push into the array is also going to be the first value that I take out, and so on. First, what we want to do is put everything that we have into the array. While slow does not equal null, I want to push into the stack slow.value right? Because each node in this linked list has a specific value. In this case, those are the integers that we are looking at for each node. After I do that, I have to keep moving the slow variable along the linked list so that we make sure we get to the end. I'm going to say slow equals slow dot next. And we keep moving that along. Keep in mind, the only values going into the stack are the values that represent the second half of our linked list. So we have our stack, and now what we want to do is make sure that the back half of our linked list is equal to the front half of our linked list in reverse order. How might we do that? Well, it turns out we have this variable cur, current, which is still at the head of our linked list. And now we have this stack that represents the back half of our linked list. So all we have to do is pop items off the stack in reverse order and check to make sure that those values equal the current node's values as we move cur forwards. That was a lot of words, I know. Let's write it out and hopefully this will make more sense to you. So I want to say while stack dot length. So while there is any items left in our stack, I want to check if those items equal the current node's value. And to make sure that this is an array, we're going to go through and if they are all equal, we'll get to the end and just return true. But if we get to a point where they do not equal each other, then we will return false, thus proving this is not actually a palindrome. So I'm going to say if cur.val does not equal stack.pop, so I'm taking off the last value of the stack, then return false. However, if they are equal, we will move through this while loop no problem. Then at the very end, we can just return true because then we know that this linked list is in fact a palindrome. I'm going to press run and cross our fingers. It didn't work because I did not push current further along in the linked list. So I have to now say current equals current dot next. We got the right answer and I'll submit and you'll see our answer is in fact accepted. Before I move on, I want you to look at my submissions. I have these three accepted and that's great. That's just me practicing for this video. But I also have a wrong answer and the time limit exceeded. What this shows is that I got the answer wrong. And I think something that's really hard for people to be okay with is the concept of getting things wrong. Um, you know, some people will just say getting things wrong is a part of life, and I agree with that. But also I think that getting things wrong is the best way to learn how to get things right, because then you have something to base your next actions off of. You know what not to do, 
or maybe you did something wrong that gave you an idea for how to do it right. So honestly, getting these questions right on the first try, that's great, but honestly, I think that getting them wrong first is the the really the best way to get better at solving lead code problems. So I'm gonna leave it at that. If you liked this video, please smash that like button for that, <laughs> that YouTube algorithm and hit that subscribe button for more of my content. If you like the wildlife wild fact, please tell me that in the comments below. If you didn't like the wildlife wild fact, please tell me that in the comments below. I did film all of that footage while I was scuba diving in Indonesia, so that's really cool. So if you wanna to talk to me about code or travel or wildlife in any capacity, shoot me a comment. I would love to respond and talk to you guys. Anyway, that's all I got. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.